computing um, probabilities, classical probability. And now in slide number 10, we, let's talk about the second way we have. That's called empirical probability. So let's define that now. We can say given a frequency distribution uh, of qualitative data, if A is an event associated with a qualitative data item, then the probability of A is given by, let's see, the number of times A occurs divided by the sum of all the frequencies. Now, qualitative data, we'll talk about this more in the next chapter, qualitative data is data that can be organized into groups, organized into categories called classes. And a frequency distribution is simply a summary table of that type of data. All right, so we take the, what do we say here? The frequency of one of the groups divided by the sum of all the frequencies. So that's our, that's our uh, empirical probability. Now let's take a look at an example of one of those in uh, slide number 11. Uh, it says the number of type, the number and type of U.S. periodicals published in 1998 is shown in the table. A journalism professor selects a periodical from 1998 at random from a paper on uh, reporting quality. In part A, determine the probability that the periodical was a quarterly periodical picked. In part B, determine the probability that the periodical was a weekly. All right. So think of what we have to do before we start to solve it. Um, in part A, well, the, the number of, of quarterly periodicals we have is 3,309. So we're going to take that number and divide it by the sum of all the others. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the sum of the frequencies, I went ahead and did this to save us a little bit of time here. Um, I'll just write the sum of F, the Greek letter, sigma, meaning sum. That's going to be 364 plus 156, and so on. Down to our last one, 3,309. Like I said, I went ahead and added those up and got 9,360. So we can go ahead and answer part A now. Uh, the probability that the periodical chosen was a quarterly All right, probability of quarterly, and we wrote P of A for that. That's simply the number of quarterly periodicals we have, 3,309, divided by the sum, the total number of periodicals. Now, I went ahead and divided that, and I got uh, 0.354 when I divided there. So... Um, so this means that the probability that the periodical was a quarterly that the guy chose is about 35.4%. Now, in Part B, um, we're asked to determine the probability that the periodical was a weekly. Well, let's see, we have 364 of those, right? So let's go ahead and answer that one. The probability that the periodical was a weekly which we'll write probability of B. That's the number of weekly periodicals we have. There are 364 of those. Divided by the total number of periodicals that were assessed. That's 9,360. So that's 364 divided by 9,360. And so when we divide that out, we get... Uh, we're, we can, what can we write for that? I guess maybe 0 0.039, maybe. How does that sound? Uh, 0.39 after the decimal point. So that means what? There's maybe a little bit less than a 4% 4 4 chance that the periodical that he picked would have been a weekly. All right, uh, so let's, sum, let's just kind of sum things up here and talk about uh, what I like to call the basic rules of probability. 
Um, first, for a sample space S, assume A is an event and P of A represents the probability of A. So I've, I've written three fundamental rules here. First, the probability of an event is a value between 0 and 1 inclusive. In other words, for any event, the smallest the probability value can be is 0, the largest it can be is 1. If it's certain not to occur, the probability is 0. If the event is certain to occur, the probability is 1. And that's, what we wrote, that's, that's why I wrote there in uh, problem number 2. So think of that as a possible range of values for probabilities. So probabilities can go from 0 to 1, or 0 to 100 if you want to put it, make it as a percent. Now, and then, and then finally in rule number three, the event that A does not occur is called the complement of A, and it's denoted by A with a superscript of C. And so notice how there, these E's, um, uh, the complement of an event is related to the probability of its, its uh, counterpart. So notice the probability of the complement of event A is simply 1 minus the probability of A. 1 minus the probability of A occurring. Uh, oftentimes, you know, we, we can compute probabilities like that. Using, you know, finding the, the event, the probability of the event first and then computing its complement. Sometimes that's easier to do. And then finally, in slide number 13, just wanted to review here. We talked about the last two types of probability, classical and empirical. There's also one more, really. It's called subjective probability. The probability is based on estimates, educated guesses, intuition, emotion, or other information. You know, we hear someone says, like, I don't have a chance to pass that test. Well, that's a probability. It's called a subjective probability. It's just made up. You know, we don't study those because they're, well, obviously non-qualitative. 